Hey everyone, today we're driving to check out the triangular great beaver rack. It's now the middle of summer, we're going to see how much the beavers have progressed on clogging that thing up. It's been a good six weeks since we've been there last. Alright everyone, we have just reached the road and they're logging this area this time. I didn't think they actually logged this area since this is actually a recreation road and wildlife sanctuary. I'm surprised to see that they are logging it, but they're probably doing it just like Maine does. Once they take it, they replant it or they'll leave a couple mature trees standing so they can drop their seeds to replant itself. Now you see right here on the roadway there's a bunch of large puddles. That's because earlier today there was a quick downpour dropping about maybe a half an inch, which is very nice because it's a dry year. I can't believe they haven't said we're in an official drought yet. This is actually the driest year I've seen. It's hard to believe by the puddles on the road, but that just happened today. On my drive here today, water levels in local reservoirs, rivers, they're the lowest I've ever seen in my life. Even worse than the supposed worst drought, which was in 2020. So I wonder, whoa, what's that? Whoa, we slammed the brakes on just in time. Where is that dude? I gotta get out and look. It's a frog. Let's get out. All right, I'm in the middle of the road. I might have to move. Where did it go? It probably already got off to the side, but. Oh man. That was so close. Did you see that? The tire was touching him. All right, he just hopped off to the side. Oh, there he is. All right, he, does, he doesn't appear to be injured. That dude is lucky. I slammed on the brakes and even slid a little bit. Yes, I will break even for frogs as long as nobody's behind me and it's safe to do so. So I'm um, kind of curious to see how high or low water levels will be at this beaver rack. I suspect them to be around normal since the beavers will probably, as a drought gets worse and worse, they will make their dam more and more watertight and eventually if they can't, then it's going to be low. But usually they will try and try. The majority of the beaver reservoirs I have been visiting in the past month or so, they are pretty low. And we won't remove anything unless it's an absolute concern to the road. Some of them, I may find a six inch beaver dam in a five foot culvert. Unless it looks like they have a good supply of water, I'm not gonna remove it. This year is just too dry. We need to save as much water as possible. Despite the reservoir I drove by about 20 minutes ago, this forest actually looks a lot greener than what I have been seeing, especially further north. Up when you get into Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont, those states, there's a lot of trees that look like they're doing bad just because it hasn't rained well in the past three years. Typically, New England's wet. Over the past 20 years, it's trending much wetter than normal. Past three years have been extremely dry. Summers, we can go probably a full month. 2020, we went, I believe, 10 weeks without any substantial rain. But this area looks really lush. It looks nice. But up when you get north where it's mostly pine trees, that those are the ones that the drought's affecting the most. Pine trees. It looks dry. They're all turning orange and dying. And once they turn brown, they're not coming back. Down here, there's certain patches which look really bad, but I believe that's more the gypsy moth caterpillar infestation. 
here's some trees that look pretty weak. That might be lack of rain or it might be just caterpillars. These roads are much nicer. They recently graded it. Usually after they grade it, it's usually very dusty. So I am thankful that it did rain today. Or I'd be making clouds of dust. Alrighty, we're pulling up on the triangular grate and the last couple beaver swamps we passed through on the way here. They looked like a foot below capacity, but they're not doing very bad. This looks um, a little bit low, but not concerningly low. We're going to get out and look, see if it needs an unclogging or not. Doesn't look that bad for the dryness we've been having. This area's been doing a lot of growing. The grass and thickets are a lot thicker and can't see as much driving by. Over here, there's still a good amount of water. Yes, we will do a small one clogging. Today, I'm gonna try a new tool I just got. A four-tine potato rake. In most situations, I don't think that would work very well, but we're going to give it a try here since I might be able to stick it in there against the bars and pull right up. If it doesn't work, we'll just do it by hand. Now, if you look in here, the entrance of the culvert, beavers keep getting in here just like last time because, you see, I believe heavy machinery picked this thing up and they didn't put it back perfectly, so now beavers can easily get around it, just like last time. All right, we'll give that a quick unclog. And on my way out of here, I'll show you the low reservoirs I was talking about. And here we are on the other side. Not looking bad at all. Just heard a giant frog over here. All right, these beavers aren't doing bad at all. See, there's a good amount of flow here too. If they kept working on it, they could raise this thing back up probably a foot in a matter of probably only a few days. All right, everyone, so we're now gonna step down there in the culvert. I'm all geared up, got my big high boots on, gloves, in case this new rake doesn't work very well. Now looking at it in real life, it looks like it may not work as I thought in my head, but we'll try it. Does not look like it's going to go as planned. It looks like doing it by hand manually is still the way to go. Yeah, that's going to take too much time. Since the water's pretty low today, guys, I'll give you a, a view down here that we never did before.
It may not look like a big dam this time, but this stuff's put together very well this time. This looks like it's flowing good now, but if you notice, a lot of floating plants are coming over, attempting to clog it again. See that? It just clogged up again on the other side. You can see the slop still coming over. I gotta wash off my big high boots now. I got pretty dirty on this one. I usually get dirty on this all the time. Because when you pull on something, sometimes it just gives, it snaps back dirt, muddy water in your face, plants. I wouldn't be surprised if I have mud all over me now. This is going nice. But you see what I mean on the other side there? This current is attracting all this sludge and plants. And it's causing a little clog itself without the beavers. 
I'm sure the beavers will be back tonight to help clog this thing back up. But this thing is called a trash rack. It doesn't deal with trash necessarily. It's to stop debris from clogging the entrance of the culvert. Point is kind of defeated because this isn't touching it, allowing beavers right in. I started calling this the beaver rack because that's the intention of it. Beavers take longer to clog this than the actual culvert. And why am I not throwing this up on the road? Because this stuff here is natural debris. It can go downstream. Downstream from here, there are no more culverts. If you've seen my previous videos, it just goes under the road here and enters another beaver pond. All that stuff we just removed. Oh, here's a big stick. Oh, look at this guy. I just broke it. I'm trying to get it out. It's jammed in there real good. Oh, it's under the grate. That means the excavator operator who put this thing back just put it on top of it. Probably. Yeah, that's underneath the... Oh, we finally freed it. Here's a couple more little sticks. Debris. That that just loosened up and got stuck. All right, so here we go through. It's so hot in here because the road's been baking in the sun and it's not very deep. So now we come out on this side. Is there a plunge pool? How deep is this? Not too bad. Let's see if I can make it over to the edge there. I don't know if I can. These boots are almost maxed out. Only got a few more inches to go. Okay, it's getting more shallow as I walk. Good. So we just raised the water level right here. A lot of the debris got stuck right there like last time. But beavers can use this now to reinforce a massive dam down there going almost a thousand feet. Beyond that, another beaver pond. A few more beaver ponds, connects with a bigger river, has a few bridges, and then it goes into a massive reservoir. This stuff is mostly waterlogged. It won't leave this pond. Most of the stuff just immediately sinks. And as it sinks, it creates habitat for frogs like we saw earlier, fish, it's food, nutrition. There's no reason to throw it out. Also in this area, there's not that much building material relatively close. This is like one of the situations beavers may actually reuse the stuff. Typically they won't, because reusing it in a beaver's head is considered not good enough. Unless it is actually an emergency, they won't reuse stuff. They just think of it as substandard, used junk. There's their big beaver lodge out there. Had to get the glove off. Now I can use this to zoom in. See that giant beaver lodge? Surprisingly, this is not the lowest I've ever seen it. Probably the lowest I've ever seen it was during the winter months. Because as soon as it starts freezing over, Beavers can't work anymore. They need open water without ice to be able to drag things over. You see the current that's attracting all these big clumps of junk over? That will create a small clog. But there's not a lot in the general area that will come over. This will be the beavers. That's a nice bullfrog barking. Over the past couple years of coming to this location, you can really see the trees here dying out. These ones that are right on the water are probably drowning. There's no way they're being affected by the current drought. Also could be bugs. 
That one right there shows a lot of rot in it. See? That broken one, believe it or not. That thing's still alive. But yet it looks like it broke off years ago. Down in this climate, if those big white pines break off, typically they can grow back. If like if it's split down the middle, as long as it has a couple good branches, I've seen them bounce back. Further north, usually not. Season's not long enough to recover. Looking good. Time to go shut off camera number two. I use my old cell phone for camera number two, just in case it ever gets lost in high current when I actually put it down. It's a beautiful day out. It's about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. A bit humid because it just rained a few hours ago. All right, let's get moving. We'll go check out those drying up reservoirs. A lot of flies made their way in here while I was out there. For anyone who's wondering what that noise is you're hearing in the back of the vehicle, that is a charcoal grill I bought at Walmart for $10. It was on clearance, a whole bunch of them, and they're typically $60. It's a good deal. Use that the rest of the summer. Honestly, I wouldn't pay $60 for it. It seems pretty thin, like it may not hold up too long. But even a few years out of it, that's worth it. It feels nice in the heat being damp from unclogging that last culvert. But take a look at this. All this has happened in the past couple weeks. See how the mud is still very wet on the edges of the reservoir. Yep. Now this isn't a terrible loss that's only about 10 feet but we're gonna see how far this actually goes downstream to the dam over there looks kind of actually cool see there where the grass is already growing back it's so green up on that muddy surface trees around here don't look like they're doing too bad either All right, right now we're in Chester, Massachusetts, checking out some of the Keystone Arches. This is the double arch, which is actually still in service by CSX. This is the lowest I have ever seen the river. Usually it's here, you can barely walk here. That log was actually stuck in the middle. It must have flooded at some point, but now it's down to nothing. You can walk across the river anywhere. I've never seen these rocks exposed. Usually this is a mighty river coming through here. I can just walk across any point. Check out this thing. There's absolutely no mortar in it. It's just held together with gravity. Just a beautiful arch. Here we are at an abandoned in-ground pool at the Chester Arches. This was an abandoned artist colony. It had a fire back in the 1970s. Now I have a long stick. I'm going to touch one of the biggest bullfrogs I've ever seen in real life. It's way out there. And there's also a tiny one next to it. Gigantic frog right there. Look at that thing. That was huge. Believe it or not, this thing is only two feet deep. Where that frog was, he's sitting in silt on the bottom. And all there he is, he came back out. Huge. These are all the biggest frogs I've ever seen. I can't believe how many massive ones there are in one spot. There's another one. Another huge one right here. But that biggest one we first saw took a dive. We don't see him anymore. Take a look at all these shots all over this. Someone was really shooting at the old clock tower. This is right next to the pond. The 
the old fireplace. Wow, this thing's dried up. They opened up the valve. Never seen it like this before. It's pretty interesting. Cause look at this giant channel it eroded. The silt would have been filling in this entire crevice, but it's completely eroded out the discharge. Oh, a blue heron just went flying away. Yep, you see all the silt just got washed downstream. I wonder if they plan on filling this back up or removing it. That's a gigantic wetland now that's drying up. That's built up over the years. Oh, look at that. We got a friend. Giant snapping turtle just entered the water. The train's not coming. They're doing work here. That's pretty cool. It looks like they're doing some welding together of the tracks. Right here we're going over a bridge right on the Palmer, Massachusetts line. I think it's ridiculous that this bridge is still one lane. It's been like this five years and construction has yet to start. Something is dangerous with that. The beams are probably rotted through underneath, I would assume. Or the reinforced deck is probably falling apart. Just not enough funding to do it. And that's one of a couple dozen bridges around here. They're down to one lane for many years. What are they supposed to do when the second lane goes? These are main arteries. That thing is huge. Thank you.